Stuart, obviously another uh, game coming soon. How do you uh, kind of reflect back and what you're looking for a bit, you know, to improve on for uh, Tuesday? No, no, there was there was several aspects. Um, we spent a full day in here yesterday. Players were in, uh, staff were in, kind of late Saturday night. Obviously into Sunday as well, just to just to make sure we tidy up the game um, and that we have that sort of debrief post match analysis. We understand what happened in the game because I think the raw emotion was obviously that we gained a point and we we have that dramatic moment and then whatever it is, 96, 97th minute where Connor Wilkinson uh, finishes what was actually some really good play in the lead up to it. Um, but I don't think we can just focus on that and centre around that. I think for us to improve and for us to get our next result, then then we have to make sure that over that stretch of 90 minutes that there's a lot of things better. Um, there was a lot of frustrations with me during the game. There was a lot of frustrations after when you watch it as well. And uh, it was just important that the players see that. Now, what I don't want to do is take away that good feeling of the late goal again, the late, the late equaliser. Um, but I'm also a realist as well. I'm also a realist in the sense that um, we enjoy that moment. I think everybody gets a bit of a boost and a lift from it. But I think you have to be honest enough with yourself to realise that there's so many aspects that, that, that weren't right. Um, I think out of possession mainly w- was a big aspect for us. And, and, I, and I spoke about after we scored and how we took a, a kind of back seat and we stepped off the game. Uh, and then the second aspect is, is probably just you know, things that we work on before the game and how we think we can hurt and punish Dundee maybe more than what we did do. But especially when we're a goal up, um, our use of the ball, you know, retaining the ball, making sure that we're playing in the other half of the pitch, making sure that we're exposing spaces that they give us because they're, you know, they're quite bold under Tony. They they, 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 they throw a lot of bodies forward. They go and try and commit bodies to, to your final third. But I also feel that that becomes a, a, a positive. If we get our structure right and our aggression right out of possession, I think we can expose them the other way. And there was lots of aspects within both of those things that that, that, that weren't right. And listen, we've, as always, we've identified that to the players. What they must do is take ownership for it. They must take responsibility for it. But we also must do that with that quick turnaround and focus that, 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 that we can rectify it coming towards Tuesday um, and, and that we can put on a better performance. I know we spoke about getting the first goal last week, last Friday, but... Our is it maybe just natural because you hadn't won for a while when you get in the lead, you maybe try to protect it too much? Is that maybe kind of just the kind of subconscious? In there? There possibly is something in that. I always think there's a yin to every yang, isn't there? You know, if, if we get the first goal, how do we think? And you and I had spoken about that um, in, in the week leading up to it. Um, it's also this aspect that we don't want to concede the first goal. It, it's just really important that you stick to your principles and that you act them out really, really well. I think that um, I think that the, the energy levels um, was possibly something for me that I looked at in the game. And, you know, <laughs> every manager comes in and after every performance, we all look back and we go, oh, well, we never ran enough and there wasn't enough energy. I genuinely felt that in, in the team and sometimes there's not a specific point that you can put your finger on and say that that's why it was and sometimes um, you know I always like my analogies you speak, you hear boxers and things like that and they come out and they say oh, I didn't feel it tonight and you, and you look and you have this one moment where you have to get it right as a boxer you go six months between your between your fights or whatever a year between your bouts and I kind of look at that with football as well sometimes there's a day where it doesn't quite click in terms of your energy levels in terms of your output um, and I felt that Saturday was a little bit of that for us um, that said the week before against Celtic I thought the energy levels were terrific and I thought that we really did cover ground that we did get about the pitch so I think for us um, as, as a group of players I think one or two can be off in that front and you can you can do alright and you and you can put in a performance I just felt throughout our team we just looked a little bit um, lethargic and I just felt that we looked as if that um, we were almost prepared to sit into a shape and just expect that, that, that we were going to get a result from it um, but as always there's, a, there's, there's always a reaction for this group of players and I think you've seen that I think the energy levels did go up towards the end of the game and I think we did find ourselves obviously uh, asking a few questions of Dundee and being a wee bit more aggressive we have to sustain that we have to sustain that obviously Derek's come in at Ross County they've had a lift with a, a win and a draw um, and I know it's going to be a real tough game watched them playing against us here um, when Malky was still in charge uh, and they're a good side they've got good players uh, and for us to kind of go up and sit in our shell and think that we're going to get a result I, I know how hard a place it is it's me I probably know that more than anybody um, that going up there in the midweek was always something up in Dingwall at Ross County that used to be spoken about the travel you know getting up there um, them having a real good feel about playing at home during the midweek and the other team having to travel and the uh, and the trials and, and whatnot that can come with that then then that's something they're going to play off of and if their energy levels are low and we're so 
sort of um, a little bit passive in our play, then it's going to be a real tough night. So very simply, that's something that we need to, we need to make better uh, on the evening. And then you still need other aspects to be right in your quality. Um, in moments of luck, staying with, staying with 11 men, no going down to 10 men, no, all those types of things need to come into play, your discipline, etc. Um, but the one thing I know is that we're going to have to match them in terms of their energy um, and their desire to go and try and win a game of football. Say about the team, sure, but they found themselves in a situation where they had to find the last minute winner, but also that they can do it on a number of occasions. I probably keep saying the same thing over and over again. I don't want to be in a position where I keep saying I've shown another terrific reaction. I don't think there's really been a game where we've not shown a, a, a reaction. But what I would like is to do, um, as we touch on there, is scoring that first goal, but managing the game a little bit better um, and where we play, where we keep possession, what our energy, energy levels look like, what our decision making is like. That, that's what I would love. That's that's the that's the blue sky thinking. That's the one that I would love to be my first pick. Um, but I know that the, the nature of the game, you're playing against another 11 guys on the pitch that can influence that as well. I understand that. I get that. Um, but there is no doubt I've been out here... I've lost count. I would like. I, I should. I should go back and and have a look at how many times we've had that rally at the end of the game. Um, it's an incredible number. E- even if I stretch that back into last season, there was there was spells where we were doing that as well, scoring late goals, showing brilliant personality and character, and and a desire to do well for his football club. Um, but you know, I I, I I feel that we have to give ourselves a better chance than that. Being down to ten men, having to get that injury time equaliser, um, we we have to we have to put ourselves in a better position than that. And there's so many different aspects as I say I could sit here for now and next week discussing them um, but I think again that emotional intelligence that I keep speaking about get yourself ahead of a game manage it better make better decisions it starts to make the game a little bit more enjoyable for you rather than starting to scramble about and look for the answers on the pitch just being proactive rather than reactive probably is is one of the things you throw in there in that in, in that sense you mentioned that it's been in for two games now. Does it make it harder to, to formulate a game plan when you've got such a small sample size of what you're trying to do with this squad? Yeah, it, it probably does. Um, again, the reason I would give you is that they, they played two slightly different ways in the two games. Um, I think maybe uh, one of those changes and the kind of change of shape was maybe enforced. I think you look at Josh Sims started in the first game and they sort of played with the uh, with the two attacking midfielders, if you like, behind a behind a main striker. Um, and in the second game, it was that kind of front pairing. So that does change aspects of it, but. I do believe in the work that we do here in terms of analysing the opposition, trying to give the players as many scenarios as we possibly can and prepare ourselves for that. Um, but it does become a wee bit unpredictable in the sense that you know, they've, they've got good options, they've got good players. Um, and in the two games that Derek's been in charge, they've played two slightly different ways or two, two slightly different systems. Um, so I think uh, it, it's, it's been two home games for them. It's, uh, it's going to be a third one. Um, and and if, if I'm being honest, having watched both games back, they've been pretty decent in both games. I think that they, I think they at least deserved a draw potentially a little bit more with some of the chances they had against Kilmarnock. And then I think in the the St. Mern game, I, I think they deserved to win the game. So it just goes back to my earlier point that it's going to be a real tough task for us. Um, but I also believe in the group of players that we've got here, and I think we've showed time and again. Um, isolating my, re- my own record against uh, Ross County since I've been here, I think it's two wins and a draw. So you know we've done all right in that sense as well. If we isolate that kind of head to head, but as a different manager um, with different ideas, so that can always change things as well. And as much as it might not be in the result you wanted, um, you've now got seven goals in four games. We talked for months about you wanting that forward line back, fit and fire, and now they're there. How pleasing is that for you to see that? Yeah, I think. The overall record for us, I, I, I believe that it might be the start that Rangers, Celtic and Hibs have scored more goals than us, then we filter into that category. Um, probably the question that I was asked over the summer was how do we replace Kevin Van Veen's 29 goals? Well, I think we've come up with a no bad answer there in terms of the goals that we're scoring, um, the chances that we get, the conversion, all that st- type of stuff. But I also acknowledge that we've got the, the worst defensive record. Um, we've lost the most amount of goals. I think that's that's possibly the start there as well. Um, and, and for me, they both come hand in hand. I've always spoke about how we attack as a team and how we defend as a team. And there were elements um, about us having that kind of three units on, on Saturday that I didn't think the pressure we got from the top end of the park at times was good enough. I didn't think that the, uh, the ball turnovers in the middle of the park was good enough. Those factors allude to having that poor... Um, that, that poor goals against column. Um, so those those are all things that I look at. Those are all things that we spend time trying to rectify and trying to adjust. 
um, along with the players. So I think sometimes it's it's that kind of false economy, isn't it? You look and you say, oh, we're scoring goals, that bit's fine, um, but we're conceding too many, so it's that bit we need to target. It actually all merges into one, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I do believe that the service and the quality going forward comes as a result of all players on the pitch. There's a wee bit of responsibility on everybody to have that, but that's the same working back as well. You know, we concede from a second phase, yeah, a set play we've got, forward-thinking players in that box that we think are capable to defend it as well. So um, there's so many different ways that you can look at it. I I am pleased with the, with, with the goals that we're scoring, and we would like to keep adding to that total. Um, but we also acknowledge that we have to we have to look for that shutout. We have to look for that clean sheet as well, which can be a catalyst for um, for a good run and a good uh, string of results as well. And how do you be missing for the game tomorrow? How much of a miss will you be in that midfield? He'd be a miss. He's been really consistent. Uh, I can I've, I've worked with him for for a long time now, um, and it's one that I can be really really honest with. I thought Harry was off his levels on, on Saturday, and he would acknowledge that himself. He's a real honest lad. He was stick his hand up to that um, and probably in this run since he's been at the football club I would say that's probably as poor as he's played personally um, because I think he's been I think he's been excellent for us and it's been a bit that's really pleased me um, his level of consistency because it's something I've always been trying to nudge towards um, that you can get two or three real strong performances then that maybe dips and then he comes again um, so I just think through age and experience you've seen that level of consistency and again he's a human being so him along with uh, several others didn't have their best 90 minutes on Saturday um, but it is a loss it is a loss he has an energy in the middle of the park he's a guy that um, probably can do all facets of the game he can do all aspects of that midfield role so um, disappointing to lose him and we don't feel as if we've got our troubles to seek um, as always um, but obviously from that Callum Slattery comes back from suspension as well so I would like to have both to pick from um, but unfortunately we've only got one this, uh, this Tuesday uh, yeah, we've, we, we, we seem to be fine. Um, there was a couple of knocks and niggles again that have been assessed yesterday, but I'd be hopeful um, by adding Callum Slattery into uh, uh, coming back from suspension. Obviously, we now know Harry goes back out, but the, the, the other players that were part of the squad all seem to be fine. Um, I would be, um, I, kinda, I, I suppose, 50-50, maybe trying to add Paul McGinn to that squad as well. He's got a, Paul McGinn's got an appointment today, and it's almost that one where he has a mask and he's been cutting about for the last uh, week and a half now doing a bit of work uh, just that protection towards his face so um, we kind of need to get him signed off before he could be a consideration for getting back in the squad so I won't know about that one until probably later today but that might be uh, an added one to, uh, to to the squad one that I could add into the group yeah, Frustration watching Harry Payton's red card back I don't know if it was one of those maybe it was 50-50 was it bad enough for it to be clear and obvious to go for them to go back and look at it though? You you know you're always getting me my high horse when you ask the questions, don't you? Um, no, listen. Two two ways I think about it. I'm really I'm crystal clear on it. I know that that will now be given as a red card. I know that that's going to be given as a red card. Um, but that's a different question today. I think it's a red card. Um, and I and I was straightforward. We've had a bit of a debate, staff here and all the rest of it. Um, now the officials will give that as a red card because we will look at the still tells. We're not going to look at the still. We'll look at the still. Um, it looks bad. It's high. Um, I think I heard the guy speaking about it over the weekend but the ball's high and both both players are contesting a ball that's bounced off the ground essentially so my opinion do I think it's a red card absolutely not but I know that the officials now will give that but I always talk about sort of conformity what we're, uh, what we're told by, um, by the officials um, and there's been several things I don't agree with um, but I've then said that's fine but if they're telling us that's what it's going to be I think if I cast my mind back to last season um, and I, I keep going over other decisions but I think it was an offside that we had here against Rangers and they said but if the lines are touching the advantage goes to the attacking team well lo and behold we had one next again week or two weeks later where by all accounts and from what I've seen the lines drawn the lines are touching and the advantage goes to the defending team it doesn't go to the attacking team when it's in our favour um, I spoke about an incident at Celtic Park last week with Greg Taylor and a tackle with, with Blair Spittle um, so again I think if Harry Payton's is a red card I think that has to be a red card and I think whatever way this goes here if they're telling us that that's going to be a red card with that type of force and that type of challenge studs leading kind of being out of control straight leg missing the ball completely endangering an opponent if we go through that criteria and we look at these challenges, but also we spend the same amount of time looking at these challenges as well. I think it was about 10 seconds after Greg Taylor's tackle at Celtic Park and I turned around to the fourth official and the linesman and I said, well, that, that looked a real bad one, we've checked it, it's fine. 
We spend an awful lot of time on Harry Payton's one. So again, it's just this level of consistency. And I just want to ensure that everything is looked upon the same way for all the clubs. You know, that's that that that's that's my wee bit. I'm very much a black and white guy, and I want justice for <laughs> for us all. But I feel as if we've got a, a heck of a mountain to climb, even when you look at some of the potential yellow card incidents and things like that. You know, there's one in Saturday where Harry Payton's wiped out in the middle of the park. On a real promise and attack, it looks as clear a yellow card as anything. It's a free kick. We play on. I speak to the fourth official, and he shrugs his shoulders and says, "No, nah, I think that's, I think that's okay." Um, but I, 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 I would just love to see this level of consistency. I feel that each team, each instant, at the particular venues and all the rest of it, certain situations are looked at completely different. And that's why I alluded to the one with Greg Taylor last week because we might have been playing against ten men, and then lo and behold, seven days later, you're the one with ten men. So I don't dispute it if it's a red card. But I'm alright with it if it's that if we blanket that and we say that that's what it's going to be right across the board. But nobody will convince me, and nobody will tell me that that's that that that's how it's been. Um, and and listen, the officials are never going to be perfect. But let's make sure that when we see these incidents, that we treat them all the exact same. 